Hi friends, welcome to our channel Candy Code. In this video, we are going to look at the minimum steps to one problem. We are going to solve this using the dynamic programming approach today. Let's first see the problem statement. Given a positive integer n, you need to return the minimum number of steps that takes n to become 1. To turn the number 1, you can perform any of the following operations. You can subtract either 1 from the given number or if it is divisible by 2, you can divide it by 2. If it is divisible by 3, you can divide the number by 3. For instance, say if our n value is 7, the output we should give is 3. Because at first I can reduce 7 by 1, after which I will obtain 6 and now I can divide it by 3 and then I will obtain 2. Again if I divide the 2 by 2, I will obtain 1. Therefore I have totally taken 3 steps to turn my 7 into 1. Let's look at the solution approach. You might think of greedily choosing the step that can make n as low as possible and continue the same till it reaches 1. But if you observe carefully, the greedy strategy does not work for all the cases. Say for example, if our n value was 10. First, if you opt for the greedy solution, you will tend to divide 10 by 2. You will obtain 5 and then reduce it by 1 where you will obtain 4 and then divide it by 2 consecutively so that you can obtain 1. As you can see via greedy approach, it takes almost 4 steps. But while solved using dynamic programming, you can obtain it within 3 steps. That is, at first you can reduce your 10 by 1 and then the 9 you obtain will be divided by 3 consecutively which will lead to 1. Now let's see the dynamic solution approach. Let's assume we are given n as 9 and we are going to construct a dp array of length n plus 1 that is of length 10 so that you get the indexes right from 1 to 9. At first I am going to initialize my index of 1 as 0. It is because to turn a number which is already 1 you take 0 steps. Therefore I am going to initialize dp of 1 as 0. I am going to start iterating from the third element of dp whose index is 2. And now at first I am going to add 1 to the preceding value of dp and store it in the current index of my dp which is dp of i is equal to dp of i minus 1 plus 1. The preceding value is 0 to which I have added 1 and stored it in my current index but I do not stop by here. We will also check which is the minimum value that is since this index is divisible by 2 we have to check which is the minimum out of the current value present in dp and the value that is present in dp of i divided by 2. Here our dp of i divided by 2 is 1. Therefore, the dp of 1 value is 0 which added by 1 will give us 1. Whereas the minimum out of both is 1 again. Therefore, there is no change here. Now when I move to the next index, here at first I am going to store 2. Since the index 3 is divisible by 3, we are also going to check the dp of 1 value. The minimum out of dp of 3 and dp of 1 plus 1 will be 1. Therefore I am storing 1 in my current index. Under the next iteration, I am going to store 2 first and then while checking for divisibility since 4 is divisible by 2 we will compare the minimum but in this case both the value will be 2 therefore we'll, there will be no change in this case. Again when moving to the index 5 I will be storing 3 first and then since 5 is neither divisible by 2 nor by 3. We are not going to change this value. Now moving to 6, at first I am storing 4 but since 6 is divisible by 2, we are going to compare 
dp of 6 divided by 2 which will be dp of 3 so i am going to compare the value present in dp of 3 with the current value present in my dp since the value present in the dp of i by 2 is lesser than the value present in the current index of dp i'll store 2 in the current index again since 6 is divisible by 3 now i'm going to check with the value of dp of 2 here as well we'll obtain 2 therefore there'll be no change again on moving to index 7 i'll store value as 3 since 7 is neither divisible by 2 and 3 the value will remain as 3 now let's move to 8 here at first i'm storing 4 since 8 is divisible by 2 i'm going to compare the value of dp of 8 with dp of 8 divided by 2 plus 1 which will give me dp of 4 plus 1 the value present in 4 is actually 2 after adding 1 to it i'll get 3 which is again less than 4 therefore i'll replace the value in 8 as 3 On moving to 9 now, at first I am storing 4 again. Since 9 is divisible by 3, we are going to check the minimum out of dp of 9 and dp of 9 divided by 3 plus 1. This will give us the minimum value as 2. Therefore, I will be replacing the current value of dp as 2. This is nothing but in order to obtain 9, we have to take 2 steps. At first, we will divide 9 by 3. Again, dividing 3 by 3 will give us 1. Therefore, we will take only 2 steps to reduce 9 to 1. Now, let's look at the algorithm. We can solve this problem either using memoization method or using bottom-up approach. At first, we will look at the memoization method. Let's assume n is the positive number given as input. We are going to create an integer array memo of length n plus 1 and initialize it to minus 1. In case if my n value was 0, then I tend to return 0. And in case if my memo of n is not equal to minus 1, because minus 1 is the default value, uh, and if it is not equal to 1, it means we have already computed the value for n. In that case, we will return memo of n. If suppose we haven't computed the value for n, then we will proceed to solve the value for n using recursive calls. And at last, we tend to return r value, which will contain the number of steps required to change n to 1. And this is the algorithm using bottom-up approach. Again here n is the positive number given and dp array is an integer array of length n plus 1. At first I am going to initialize my dp of 1 as 0 and then I iterate from the second index till n. And then here as well I am going to perform recursive calls and store the minimum value that we have obtained and then return the value present in the last index of my DPRA that will give the minimum steps to reach 1. Let's look at the time and the space complexity analysis. The time complexity in this case will be order of n for both the memoization technique as well as the bottom up approach. And also the space complexity is order of n here, where n is the number given as input. The space complexity is order of n in both the approaches. Since we have used an extra space 